Hi, I'm Cheryl. I'm a Ned Kelly artist. I have been considered to be this country's leading Ned Kelly artist. My art style has been considered to be realistic to modern. I have also won many awards in art shows over the years. I am a disabled artist and my artist's name is Cheryl Billings. My medical condition consists of chronic pain syndrome in my shoulders, arms, upper back and hands. I've also had surgery on both hands for carpal tunnel. And I have other health conditions and ailments. That's why I need plenty of breaks and a few months to finish one picture. I researched Ned Kelly's past history from old prison photos and lithographs. Or I will just make up my own sketch from Ned's life story. Ned Kelly's life struggle for existence and survival happened in the 19th century. Women also at the time of Ned's struggle were not considered to be important or even recognised as talented artists. This is why I can proudly wear Victorian heritage clothing and I can also be recognised as a talented Australian artist in the 21st century. I now welcome you through this introduction of my Nick Kelly oil paintings, which is proudly supported by Knox City Council. This first oil painting gives you a closer view of Ned Kelly's armour. Ned's also wearing a belt with a Keynes mustard tin, so he can have easier access to his bullets when he needs them. Ned Kelly's holding a number 31 pocket model revolver. He's also had the tip of his thumb blown off, so he cannot fire the revolver anymore. When Ned Kelly was arrested at Glen Rowan, the revolver was also found in his possession. This history is from fact. The revolver was on loan to the State Library of Victoria until the revolver was stolen while on display in the USA. This second oil painting shows Ned Kelly displaying his full body armour. Ned Kelly's had a bullet penetrate through his right foot, which has caused arterial bleeding from his right toe. Ned has also got blood dripping down the arm to his left hand. This oil painting was finished on the 11th of the 11th, 2005 which was Ned Kelly's anniversary. These two pictures here indicate Ned Kelly's last stand. For these oil paintings, most of my information has come from the Kelly historian Gary Dean from Glen Rowan. I designed a sketch before tempting these pictures. I also used a picture of Ned's armour, which is showing here. He had on the day of his capture. To protect himself from bullets, Ned's armour was made from sheets of iron. Ned used plough mould boards they got from local farms in the area of Greta and the Glen Rowan district. The armour consisted of a helmet for his head, back and front body piece. It even had shoulder caps. The suit would have been very heavy. It weighed between 25 and 30 kilograms. On the morning of Ned Kelly's last stand, the year 1880, time 7.15am in the morning, Nick Kelly is wounded badly by a bullet, ripping through the upright forearm, then smashes into his upper arm just above the elbow, causing arterial bleeding. Then Ned gets a serious wound to the right foot. The bullet enters through the big tie, then explodes out of the heel. Ned Kelly was holding his gun with his right hand but could not fire the gun anymore because his thumb had been blown off. Ned also used a keen mustard tin for carrying his bullets in on his armour. Ned's idea for the armour came from his favourite book called Luna Doon. Ned Kelly was a gentleman. He had become a victim of circumstances. Ned's armour has now become a symbolic symbol fight for freedom. I used a prison photo for this oil painting which is showing here. The original photograph has Ned seated on a chair in a cutaway jacket and mosque in pair of pants. The police in Kyton most certainly have taken the photograph of Ned when he was only 15. This oil painting Ned Kelly 15 years of age. I used a prison photo and Ned's death mask for this oil painting which is showing here. The original photo was taken by the police at Pentridge Prison after Ned's transfer from the Beechworth Jail in 1873.
This oil painting, Ned Kelly, 19 years of age. Now I have put these two Ned Kelly oil paintings together here. Ned's 15 and 19 years of age. Ned Kelly was only age 12 when his father died and Ned had to become head of the family. Ned was also only 14 years old when he was first arrested and sentenced to 10 days in the lockup. Then seven months later, Ned was arrested again after an incident with a travelling salesman. Ned received another five months in jail. Then three weeks after Ned's release from jail, he was in trouble again for riding a stolen horse in town. A trooper's attempt to arrest Ned resulted in a pistol whipping wounds on Kelly's head. And there was also spur wounds on Constable Hoare's legs and backside. Ned Kelly did put up a good fight, but this time Ned served almost three years in prison with hard labour. On Ned's release in February 1874, Ned Kelly returned to Greta as a hardened but much more mature man at the age of 20. Ned was also accused for every crime in Greta by the police. For this oil painting, I designed a sketch from the photo which we're both showing here. Ned Kelly's 20 years of age at the Imperial Hotel in Beechworth, year 8th of August 1874. Edward Kelly is a bare knuckle boxer wearing silk trunks over his long underwear and special boxing shoes called pumps. Ned was only 20 when he had his famous 20 round bare knuckle fight with Isa Wright at the Imperial Hotel. The hotel was on the banks of Spring Creek at Beechworth, but is not there anymore. Ned was six foot tall, his eyes were hazel brown, his hair was brown in colour, his body type was very broad and fit with no body fat. Ned's fight with Wild Wright occurred by chance. Isa Wright had left a stolen horse at Ned's homestead. Isa asked Ned to look after the horse, but Ned not knowing the horse was stolen from the postmaster, rode the horse into town. Even though Ned did not steal the horse, he was still arrested and sentenced to prison. This oil painting shows Ned Kelly's riding his grey mare and also wearing the green sash he was given as a boy. Ned was a fine horseman. I did make three sketches before ending up with this oil painting. Two sketches are showing here. In this picture, Ned's grey mare has the letters E-K on its thigh. These two letters indicate Ned's name, Edward Kelly. This pictures Ned Kelly in the bush holding his 1856 model cog carbon gun. Ned was a fine bushman, tracker and hunter. For this oil painting, I was inspired by a rock superstar by the name of Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger made his dynamic scream debut as Ned Kelly in a movie called Mick Jagger, Ned Kelly, 1970. For this oil painting, I made a sketch from Mick Jagger's picture, which are both showing here. This oil painting has the Kelly gang wearing their armour in front of the Glenrowan Hotel. I designed a sketch from an original photo of the Glenrowan Hotel, which are both showing here. On the 28th of June, 1880 at 7.15am, the last stand has begun. Police crouch behind trees and logs, while Ned Kelly is holding his 1856 model gun standing beside his brother Dan Kelly. Joe Burns and Steve Hart stood on the front veranda of the Glenrowan Inn, shooting back at the police. Beneath the sign are two empty alcohol barrels that are left over from the celebrations on the Sunday before the siege. The Glenrowan Inn building was a small, unimposing, five-roomed weatherboard. It had a detached slab and a bark kitchen at the rear. The interior was lined with hessian and sparsely furnished. When the police burned down the Glenrowan Inn, the owner, Mrs Jones, was at the Wangaratta Hospital at her dying son's bedside. This oil painting is of Sergeant Still. He has fired two bullets into Ned Kelly's legs. Sergeant Still arrived at Glen Rowan wearing a Tweedy Sportsman outfit ready to hunt. Ned had tripped over a log and was already falling when Sergeant Still fired twice into his legs. This is what really brought him to the ground. The main wounds Ned had received were in his left leg, but he did have a lesser wound in his right leg. The day after the battle, Sergeant Still was presented with an engraved sword to commemorate Ned's capture. I used a photo of Sergeant Still when I designed my sketch for this picture, which are both showing here. 
This oil painting has Ned Kelly captured. On Sunday the 27th of June 1818, Ned Kelly was captured, even though he had the protection from his armour. The thing that did bring Ned to the ground was a bullet through his back left knee. His trial was held in Melbourne and he was sentenced to death by hanging at the Old Melbourne Jail on the 11th of November 1880. For this picture I designed a sketch which is showing here. This oil painting has Ned Kelly laying on the floor of the Glen Rowan train station year 1880. I designed a sketch from an original lithograph which are both showing here. The armour has been removed and Ned Kelly is laying on a fleece blanket. He is also very weak with 28 wounds to his body. While Sergeant Steele is leaning down on his knees over Ned, Ned Kelly is shivering and his blood is smeared all over the floor. At the time of Kelly's siege, Sergeant Steele was the one who fired bullets, which peppered Ned Kelly's legs and brought him to the ground. This oil painting has Sergeant Steele visiting Ned Kelly in his Beechworth jail cell. I designed my sketch from a photo of Ned Kelly's jail cell, which are both showing here. The Beechworth jail was not a nice place to spend time. Prisoners had no modern plumbing or facilities in the 1870s. There was a wooden bucket in the corner of the cell for a toilet. The cell door only had a tiny slit for air and light. The cell door also had a hatch for communication, so the guards can communicate with a prisoner. The prison walls are made from solid granite and the cells were hot in summer and really cold in winter. The cells are small and the prisoners were also isolated from each other. The Beechworth Jail is also the place where 20 suspected Kelly sympathisers were held in 1879. This attempt was to limit support to the Kelly gang. The bushranger Harry Powell was also imprisoned in the Beechworth Jail. This oil painting is of Ned Kelly's Beechworth committal trial. I was directed to design a new sketch from an original lithograph by Bob Simpson, who has been the manager of the Beechworth Courthouse for 20 years. The original lithograph has Sergeant Steele in the dock with Ned Kelly, which is showing here, but according to Bob this is not correct. The new sketch should have Constable Kelly on the left hand side beside Ned Kelly in the dock. Also Sergeant Steele should be standing on the outside of the dock. My sketch is showing here. The Knox Leader newspaper published an editorial about this oil painting and I was also considered to be this country's leading Ned Kelly artist in that editorial. On the 6th of August year 1880, at 10 a.m., the courtroom was packed with sympathisers, onlookers, and women. Among the crowd was a young girl of good looks and respectable attire. She was blowing kisses to Ned Kelly. Ned returned the compliment with great interest. While Ned Kelly is wearing a handsome serge jacket, the judge and everyone in the trial are wearing formal clothing. And Ned's wounded left arm is gripping the lapel on his jacket. He's also resting his right crippled fist on the docks rail in front of him. This oil painting is of Ned Kelly's arrival to North Melbourne train station year 1880. I designed a sketch from an original lithograph and made a few changes which are both showing here. Shortly before 3pm a train with Ned Kelly on board arrived to North Melbourne station. Passengers on the train were soon informed that Kelly was in the van of the train. But to prevent a rush on the station, troopers and railway officials kept the public in order. Ned Kelly was removed from the train and placed onto a stretcher for his journey to the jail. While the crowd was becoming difficult to keep back, Ned was weak, pale in appearance and just laying very helpless on the stretcher. But he still looked up at the crowd with some interest. The females in the crowd expressed sympathy for Ned's broken down, dejected appearance. Ned Kelly was then lifted onto a horse wagonette for his trip to the Old Melbourne Jail. This oil painting has Ned Kelly under intensive care in the old Melbourne Jails Hospital. I designed a sketch from an original lithograph and made a few changes which are both shown here. Ned Kelly is now a patient in the Jails Hospital ward because the jail surgeon has removed a bullet from his right hand, but the most severe wound he suffered was in his left arm. The bullet travelled along the left arm between his elbow and shoulder. Ned's also in a ward with two other prisoners. One prisoner was not a patient. He was only there to watch over Ned and wipe his face with a cloth. Ned Kelly was also attended by Dr Shields, a medical officer, who was about to give him an injection. A priest also came to visit him frequently and to prevent Ned's escape. The ward door was always locked. This oil painting is of Ned Kelly's trial at the Central Criminal Court in Melbourne. I designed a sketch from an original lithograph which both showing here. 
Now Kelly's trial commenced on the 18th of October, year 1880, in the Central Criminal Court, corner of Russell and Latrobe Street. A huge crowd gathered to witness the trial, and a large number of troopers were stationed to maintain order. The trial went for only one and a half days. Was this a fair trial? Ned's execution was scheduled for Thursday the 11th of November. The public did try to save Ned Kelly's life. A petition with 32,000 signatures were presented to the Governor to stop the execution, but had no success. This oil painting has Ned Kelly standing against the stone wall of the old Melbourne jail. I designed a sketch from Ned's prison photo, which are both showing here. This picture shows Ned Kelly's right hand very crippled from gunshot wounds. Ned was also caught winking at the time of the photo, and he's also wearing a white scarf he wore to his trial, which he asked permission from the jail to wear. Ned Kelly's last meal was roast lamb and peas. He also washed down the meal with a bottle of claret. On the 11th of November before 10am, Ned was transferred to the condemned cell before his hanging. A crowd of 5,000 people gathered outside the jail. This oil painting is of Ned Kelly's portrait. I used a prison photo for this picture, which is showing here. This picture gives a closer view of Ned Kelly's face at the age of 26. I hope you enjoyed this insight of Ned Kelly's history and my art. The belief is Ned Kelly was a revolutionary, which means he tried to overthrow and change the Australian government system before his death in the year 1880. But one thing he did do was leave his legacy. What do you believe? Is Ned Kelly a legend or just a criminal? You decide for yourself. But do keep in mind, Ned Kelly was only 14 when he was first sentenced to prison with hard labour, and his mother also was condemned to the Beechwood jail with a baby to breast, so Ned's war had begun. It had become very personal against the government troopers in the 19th century. If you have found my art fascinating, please do contact me, or just observe this website for new updated Ned Kelly oil paintings in the future. I also would like to thank Knox City Council for proudly supporting this website.